today I just wanted to do a video giving you my Mary Stewart books ranked from least favorite to my most favorite. So this is um, prior to my reread of Nine Coaches Waiting, but I am anticipating that it will Nine Coaches Waiting will stay in the same position that it was before since I've read all the other um, romantic mysteries. I think I know where it is in the ranking, but just in case you aren't familiar with Mary Stewart, she was an author who had a really long spanning career and a lot of it included these wonderful um, mysteri romantic mysteries, I think is what I would call them. But I don't want that to put someone off who thinks that they won't like romance in a book because it really doesn't feel over the top, you know, anything like that. I, I just think it's um, oh, just such a lovely, lovely book. Uh, kind of book to read. She also has a series uh, which has kind of sort of a King Arthur legend in it, which I have not gotten to, but I would like to at some point. So without further ado, let's get into the books. So my least favorite is this little um, set that has two novellas that might be short stories um, that were previously unpublished, or one of them, the, um, the Wind Off the Small Isles, was unpublished and I think it was unpublished for a reason and then the last one was published in a ladies journal but these are both uh, really short kind of half-baked novellas that feel kind of cheesy so it was still Mary Stewart so it was cool to read I don't know the the types of plots that she did but it's just nothing compared to her books and um, you know just how amazing her books can be so this definitely ranks last um, and I wasn't that surprised because it's very, very short. And like I said, she previously did not publish The Wind Off the Small Isle. So I felt kind of bad for her that posthumously people are publishing it and she may not have wanted it to be. Next is The Gabriel Hounds. Uh, this one is, unfortunately, it's, you know, way down there just simply, I think, because of the time that I was trying to read it. And it was um, summer of 2017. Uh, when I was feeling really, really sick in the first trimester of pregnancy with my second baby and also having loads of heartburn uh, from this really fun bacteria called H. pylori. And I will forever associate this book with that time. Uh, it was when I was just starting to get back into reading. So in a way, it's somewhat of a compliment uh, to this book that I did then get really into it. So I'll definitely be rereading it at some point because um, I definitely want to give this a try again. Um, but this takes place in Lebanon, so it was neat to have, you know, a hotter setting. I feel like a lot of her books um, are either in a really hot setting or a very cold setting. There's no happy medium, mediums, but it just felt very plotting for the majority of the book for me. It sped up for the last hundred pages, but that still didn't redeem it totally for me. Um, obviously I enjoyed it because it's Mary Stewart, uh, but yeah, that's why it is lower down on the list. Then moving along to My Brother Michael. This is one that I can't explain it exactly. I just know I didn't connect with this book. Uh, the other ladies in the buddy reading group enjoyed it a lot more than I did. So I think it was definitely a matter of just my personal taste. This one is in, I always have to, to look, um, uh, it, it has a fun start in that a woman is told like, you, here's the keys to the car. You need to take this car and drive it. And she's like, what, what are you talking about? They're like, take the keys. And of course it's a case of mistaken identity, but she takes the keys. Um, and so it's definitely a whirlwind start in this one, but something about, um, just the pacing of it. And I just wasn't that invested in the mystery in this. And since you know, the big crux of her books are mysteries, uh, then if you're not that invested in it, then it's just not going to be, you know, a big smash. So yes, this was one that um, I definitely want to reread though, because maybe it was just the time that I read it and I would enjoy it more. So moving on to A Stormy Petrol. This one uh, was, uh, is in Scotland, which I was very excited about. And unfortunately, it, I got to the end, I was like, oh, huh, well, that was the end of that. <laughs> so it was very, what I would say, underwhelming. Uh, the big mystery in it wasn't much of a mystery. I wasn't that interested in the romances in it. So it is um, nice with the setting. It's a, a cute little Scottish town uh, that's kind of 
away from a lot of technology, way, way out in the country. So the setting is really fun. Um, and if I had not read many other Mary Stewart, you know, maybe this would be higher up there. But since I have, it is not. So yeah, it was a nice little nugget of a book, but but not anything really impressive compared to the later ones in the lineup. The next one, which felt very different uh, from these previous ones, is called The Moon Spinners. This is uh, the one that was made into a movie with Haley Mills a while back. And um, I think this is one that maybe people have heard of out of her, um, out of her mysteries. This one takes place in um, Crete. And it starts off with really intense, you know, highly dramatic things happening. Um, her female leads always have very interesting names. So in this one, it's Nicola. Uh, and she, Nicola ends up stumbling onto something crazy that's happening and kind of trying to figure out how to, um, how to, you know, help things not happen, how to, um, make sure that bad things are not going to happen basically. So it is very fast paced. Uh, I, and I don't know like what it was in particular about this one that made me not connect with it at much as much, but I, I did enjoy it. Um, yeah. So the moon spinners, I don't know if I'm, I'm selling these very well. I think it's just though that I'm very enthusiastic about the latter ones. So uh, the next one I have a very complicated relationship with, and that is the Ivy tree by Mary Stewart. So this um, takes a lot of the plot elements that are in Josephine Tay's Brett Farrar. And it talks a lot about Brett Farrar in here, but then she does her own little Mary Stewart spin on it. So I have a theory that is very hard to get a big sample of. But my theory is that whichever one you read first out of Brett Farrar or The Ivy Tree, you're going to prefer. So I read Brett Farrar more and I enjoyed the brevity of it. I really packed a punch. Whereas um, Becky and Bethany, who host Talking Amongst Our Shelves with me, they prefer this one and they both read this one first. So that's just my theory. Um, I, I don't know if it's really provable, but um, I just know that what I liked in the, the brevity of Brett Farrar, how it packed a punch, I felt that this was slightly long-winded, but I did really enjoy how she totally turned it into her own book because I was a little bit um, disappointed at the beginning that it felt so similar to Brett Farrar. But then as I kept reading, she totally made it her own story. So in a way, I did really enjoy seeing that aspect of it. And I think um, I'm planning on rereading basically all of these eventually. So it'll be neat to come back to it. Uh, but I realize I haven't really said much of what this is about. But this is in um, Roman wall country in England. So like ancient Roman wall country. And um, there is a woman who's been missing for years, the heiress to this estate. And then years later, she comes back and says she's ready to inherit the estate. And so people are skeptical, like, is it really her? Can it be her? How did she, how was she gone all this time? Just never thought to communicate with us. Um, so yes, very, very interesting. Um, and I know a lot of people really do talk this one up. This is one that they really like. Then moving on to a very different setting of Austria and our protagonist's name is Vanessa. So this is Airs Above the Ground. And this is really neat because there is the circus in this one and Austria. So she has no other books in Austria. And I just think it's a really neat, unique, neat, unique take on this one. And this one, what I really liked about it were the side characters. Um, just really fun, full of personality. And they just added a an extra element of fun to the story. There was lots of humor in this one, which I love how Mary Stewart can kind of intermingle humor and just really suspenseful kind of dire circumstances that are happening. Um, this one definitely had me on the edge of my seat. And for a lot of it, I was kind of really wondering what is going to happen. Uh, the only downside was at the end, the last 100 pages felt kind of plotting, meandering. I wasn't sure what was happening. So if, you know, the last hundred pages had been maybe 50 pages, it would have been a five-star read. So I definitely enjoyed it. Um, but it was just a bummer to kind of end on not as strong of a note. 
Then we are moving into a Thunder on the Right. This is a more recent re recent one that I read this fall. And uh, this one involves nuns in the plot, which you don't really see um, in many mysteries. And I really liked that element of it. It was unique and it was an interesting dynamic to add to it because there are certain things about, you know, the vocation of nuns that come into play here and is just really a fascinating element to add to this mystery. Um, our leading lady in this one is Jillian and this is in the Pyrenees uh, mountains, in the, but then in the Valley of the Storms. And uh, in this one, she's traveling alone, which a lot of them, the leading lady is traveling alone. And she ends up meeting up with an old flame, but she's on her way to see uh, her aunt. Her aunt is very ill at this um, abbey and where all the nuns are. And she wants to see her aunt and, you know, be there for her. And um, she hears that, her aunt uh, said these certain type of blue flowers were her favorite flower, and she becomes suspicious right away uh, because she knows her aunt is colorblind, so she's going to investigate more. So yes, this was a really uh, pacey one, really, uh, yeah, just lots of suspense going on in this one, as in many Mary Stewart. All right, then moving on to a short and sweet one, and that is Rose Cottage. So our main character in this one is Kate, and it's the summer of 1947, and she inherits um, this old cottage called Rose Cottage. She's never known her parents, and so she wants to go back to this cottage where people uh, in the town knew her parents and kind of try to investigate that, maybe get some answers um, but this also has a really sweet and tender romance in it. It's a little town. This is definitely one of her cozier ones. And like I said, short and sweet, and it's a really satisfying one um, that is done rather briefly. It's just 250 pages. So definitely um, worth your time. Then moving on, this was the second Mary Stewart I ever read. And this one is in Provence and it is Madame Will You Talk. This is an extremely gripping Mary Stuart um, that basically starts off with our character thinking that a little boy is in danger from a certain man. And so she just takes him and drives and drives and drives and is trying to stay as far away from this man as she can. And it's in a really intense lot of chase scenes. And the leading lady in this is Charity. And so she's terrified that this man will catch up with them. And so there's lots of taking back roads and hiding out at little sleepy cafes and all of that. But things are not all that they seem, uh, as in, you know, many of these. So I definitely recommend this one. I really enjoyed it. And this is on the shorter side. This is around uh, 300 pages. So it doesn't take long to get through that at all. One that was a delightful, delightful read on uh, in September was Wildfire at Midnight. This is another Scottish Mary Stewart that totally, totally just knocks it out of the park. The main character in this one is Gianetta, and she is visiting the Isle of Skye just to get away from everything, to be on vacation. And she ends up bumping into someone that she was kind of hoping she wouldn't see there. Uh, but along with that, there are people who are uh, become who they're all staying in this cozy bed and breakfast and a couple of the uh, people who are staying in it just end up missing. And so something unseemly is afoot and Gianetta and the others have to kind of figure out exactly what is happening. But the uh, just Scottish setting really gave it so much atmosphere, just such a like rich tapestry for it to be set in. And it's an awesome Mary Stuart. Then moving on to one that I would say is short and sweet, like Rose Cottage, but it has a lot of humor and heart. So that's why it's ranked higher. And that is Authority Hold. And in this one, it, it, it features witches. And Jilly is the main character. And she's been given this cottage by her cousin. And so she goes to see the cottage, see what it's like. And it's in a very small insular town where everyone is so fascinated with the fact that this new person is coming to town. Uh, and it's just a really fun, fun book that has a great mystery. But like I said, such a spirit of fun. And I really liked the romance in this one. 
And yes, it's just an excellent one. I enjoyed it so much. I can't wait to reread this one. And it is on the shorter side. It is around 250 pages. So definitely highly recommend that one. Then this is kind of my top three. I would, I would basically say these are tied. I mean, that the next two are tied. Uh, but this one is This Rough Magic. And what a treat this was. I, I can't stop smiling whenever I think about this one. This one was set in Corfu. And our main character in this one is Lucy. And she goes to visit her, um, her sister. And uh, stay, you know, in this beautiful picturesque setting of Corfu. And um, then, of course, you know, some mysteries start to come into play and there are dolphins in this uh there's colorful locals who you get to know there's hilarious circumstances there's a really fun dynamic romance this just has a little bit of everything that you could want out of mary stewart and i love it so much so yeah i already i cannot wait to reread this and i really enjoyed the sisterly relationship in this one Alrighty, second place goes to Touch Not the Cat. This one um, really surprised me. And our main character in this one is Bryony. Uh, her father has passed away um, and he leaves a very cryptic last message for her. So she wants to go and investigate what exactly happened to him. So she goes to this big, beautiful estate um, and there are uh, some boys who are her age so young men who she knew when she was a lot younger and so it's interesting you know her meeting up with them again and just kind of everyone knows her in this little area and I can't explain exactly what I liked about this I just know that all of a sudden the plot got very exciting and this one you really don't know who to trust and it's so fun it keeps you on the edge of your toes and I love this one especially the romance in this one I thought was very sweet and like I said, there was a little bit of humor in this one. It was just an excellent, excellent Mary Stewart to read. And then first place goes to, and I'm filming this now before we will have reread this, the Mary Stewart ladies and myself, and that is Nine Coaches Waiting. So this might be her longest one. Oh no, it's just, it feels very thick, but it's 450 pages. So anyhow, this one is in uh, the French Alps and our main character's name is Linda. And she accepts a position as a governess in this beautiful estate to a little boy. Uh, but they really want someone who will teach him English. And so she lies about the fact that she speaks French. And so then it becomes very scarily clear after she is there that there are some really shady things going on. And uh, she kind of needs to take matters into her own hands to keep uh, certain people safe. So yes, it was so edge of your seat. I read this in three days the first time that I read it and I cannot wait to reread it. So I think this still remains my very most favorite Mary Stewart. So those are all my Mary Stewart. So please let me know what you think of the rankings. If you have one that is ranked way lower or higher than I have it organized and let me know maybe your favorite Mary Stewart or one that you're wanting to get to. And I will see you guys for another vlogmas video tomorrow.